All right, so starting with game one. Hey, Chalk, I'm looking at my call screen right now. It's jacked up. See what I'm saying? Communicating with my EP. Love that song. Anyway, Car Flag Nation, Mile High Country. How y'all living? Are you not entertained? Now, we knew it'd be a good series. Last night, though, was better than that. Last night was better than good. If you're a Denver fan or you're a two-time MVP Denver center, last night was damn near perfect, at least for much of the night. The Nuggets shot 55% for the game, but for most of the game, it felt like they were shooting damn near 100%. It felt like nearly everything they shot went down. It felt for a while like they couldn't miss. It felt like Jokic was the most unstoppable, dominant force that we have ever seen. Like, I don't know how that dude or that team is supposed to play any better than they did for the first three quarters. However, I definitely have never seen him or them play any better than that. However, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody play better than the way Jokic showed up last night, at least for the better part of those three quarters. I mean, is there anything this guy can't do? Everything he did worked, and the guy did everything. For the better part of three quarters, he was essentially putting together the Hoops version of a perfecto. He ended up with 34 points, 21 boards, 14 dimes, 12 of 17 from the field, 3 of 3 from beyond the arc. I mean, essentially just out of control. Basically, his first three quarters could be summed up by the very last play of the third quarter when he knocked in that absurd, fading, buzzer-beating three over AD because, well, because of course he did. Quote, of course it goes in. Of course it goes in. That was pretty much the vibe last night. And that bucket gave Denver 106 points and a 14-point lead through three quarters against the alleged best defensive team left in the playoffs. In fact, it's not even alleged. They are, or were. Pretty impressive. Honestly, a little scary. However, before everybody runs in here to crown their asses, we all have to admit that the Nuggets dodged a massive scud in the fourth quarter. Potentially, even a fatal scud. I mean that. Because even after all that Denver dominance, it was still somehow a one-possession game in the final minute of the fourth quarter. How is that possible? For the longest time, it looked like a total curb stomping. That somehow, some way, was a one-possession game in the final minute of the fourth. After all of that dominance, it ended up looking for a second like they might not even win. Like somehow, some way, the Lakers might actually rip that game. And if Denver were to come from ahead to choke away that game, that would have been beyond devastating. That was devastating. That probably could have been a game one knockout blow if they lost that game. Because I have no idea how the hell you get up off the mat after a loss like that. And this is what the Lakers do, right? They rip game ones. They rip game ones, and in turn, they rip and then hold the home court. We've already seen them do it twice this postseason. And you'll recall, I said yesterday on the program, when LeBron wins game one, he's 29-2 and two overall. I could easily argue that as dominant as they were for much of that game, had the Nuggets let that game get away, that series might already be over. That's how catastrophic that would have been to let that game get away. But they didn't. They were able to dodge that scud, but just barely. Lakers made some really effective adjustments in the second half, specifically guarding Jokic with Rui Achimura instead of AD, letting AD kind of roam around, took a little pressure off him. Meantime, the Nuggets essentially just stopped playing defense. I mean, they literally stopped playing any defense at all in the second half. They stopped playing defense, and then they stopped hitting seemingly every single shot. And then all of a sudden, what time is it? Pucker time. Tight butthole time. Holy crap time. Holy crap, we might actually gag this game time. Made your butthole poker up. It did, didn't it? Sidebar on Achimura. Holy crap, what a player this dude is. What a pickup that was. 
What an incredible move by Rob Lopalenka at the deadline to rip this guy from the Wizards. Rui for Kendrick Nunn and three second-round picks and a bag of basketballs. Man, that's some business now. Again, I can't say enough about the job that Robert Lowe Palenka has done since LeCap let him actually do his job. So a ton of credit to Rui and a ton of credit to the Lakers for hanging in the fight. You know, normally when the Lakers lose, they get blown the hell out. In fact, that's kind of NBA playoff basketball right now, right? But that's not what happened. I thought for sure when they're down 20, it's just going to be another one of those Laker games where, all right, they're going to get blown the hell out. We'll have garbage time in the middle of the third quarter. And then Darvin Ham will get his guys some rest. That's not what happened. They hung in. They made adjustments. They found a way back into the game. And then at the end of the game, they actually had a chance. Nearly delivered a game one blow on the road. However... And remember I said yesterday, for the Lakers to win, and I think they can win the series, if LeCap and AD are at the top of their games. And they were. They both played big last night. However, 0.0 credit to LeBron for pulling up and hoisting and bricking yet another three, down three, with 45 seconds left, and Jamal Murray guarding him. Dude. LeBrick, are you ever going to stop chucking up threes? Like, you know, because if you haven't noticed, on our team. Yeah, dude, you're hardly a laser. My man, how rich is that? Hey, in case you haven't noticed, we don't really have any lasers on our team. Actually, you do now. You're just not one of them. If you haven't noticed, there's no lasers in that mirror, big dude. If you haven't noticed, they're not going in when you jack them up. He was 0 for 4 last night. He's shooting 25% from 3 for the playoffs. LeBrick, I know you're a bright dude. I know you're a basketball genius. So I know you know that dad is not good. I know you know that's a terrible decision. A terrible decision. 45 seconds left. And you're settling for and jacking up a three that you have to know has no chance of going in? Dude, he did an amazing job picking on and attacking and abusing and humiliating and frankly terrorizing Jamal Murray for most of the second half until that play. Until the Lakers worked their way all the way back to get within a single possession in the final minute. And that's when LeBrick decided that it was a good time for another LeBrick. I mean, dude, far be it for me to ever tell somebody like you, the alleged GOAT, what to do and what not to do. I mean, after all, you always make the right basketball play. Except right there. Dude, stop jacking up threes that have no chance of going in. Oh, one more thing, sidebar. Stop wrecking the Space Jam franchise. Dude, get hill, attack the smaller man and the rack, get fouled, and don't settle for a three that we know you're not going to make. Oh, one more thing. Stop wrecking the Space Jam franchise. To the bricks, brick. Denver survives. Great game to start a great series. Yesterday, I called Joker the best player in the world, and last night, you saw why. This guy's had his doubters, he's had his critics, and he's shutting them all the hell up. He's letting his play do the talking. Right now, his play is freaking screaming, which is why, after the game, former Laker KCP said there really is only one difference just one difference between Jokic and Braun. Yeah, I know. Breaking news. This just in. I've never seen another guy like Jokic and what he can do at that size. But the thing is, it's also not about him. And in some ways, it's not about him at all. Like, he's the one that gets everybody else going. He can get whatever he wants, whenever he wants, but he gets everybody else going. He's the one that makes the offense work. He elevates everybody else. Like, if LeBron has essentially perfected the point forward role... Jokic is perfecting the point center. Hell, at this point, he's pretty much the best point guard in the league at 7-1. So I get the parallel. 
I also have issues with the parallel, and I'll get to that in a sec. My man, you were right the first time. It actually is offensive. I'm offended on your behalf because that's not the only difference. LeBron can't make a three. Jokic can't jump, but LeBrick can't shoot, at least not from long distance. Joker is shooting 51% from three. Is that any good? 51% from beyond the arc in the playoffs, which is better than twice as good as LeBrick. Last night, Joker was 100% better than LeBrick from the three because he didn't miss one and LeBrick didn't make one. That's what makes the Joker the best player in the series and the best player in the world right now. And last night only reinforced it. But it also reinforced that Denver is going to need this guy to show up that big three more times to actually win this series. You know, on the flip side of that, how about the Lakers losing a game where AD goes off for 40 and LeBron just missed a triple-double? I mean, I said yesterday, they'll win the series if those two were at their best. And they were except when LeBrick was settling for ill-fated threes at the end of the game. All I can say is, dude, had to be gassed out. To settle for that, and instead of attacking the smaller man, getting to the rack, getting fouled, I mean, that's not, quote, the right basketball play. But Lakers showed a lot of heart, a lot of grit. They hung in. Thinking you had already won a boat race, and then just quitting on the defensive end against a Laker team that doesn't quit, is a recipe for a freaking disaster. And they just did avoid it. The Nuggets are fortunate that did not bite them in the ass because you just know that when they didn't choke the Lakers out and the Lakers still hung around, like around 10 or so, they'd make their run, and they did. So, finally, that brings us right back to where we started, right? The series is awesome. These margins are razor thin. It is a coin flip series. And I'm already counting down the hours until game two tomorrow night. Remember when I said yesterday it was too close to call me? And that I had not yet gotten down? Well, I did get down right before tip. Went all punk with it. Hit the nuggets on the money line right before the tip. So thank you very much, fellas. I needed that one almost as much as you did. Hey, can you shoot better than 100%? Because that's what it felt like the Nuggets were doing last night for a long part of that game. Like, the altitude makes the air hard to breathe, but does it make the ball always go in the hoop? Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell to be the first to know when we do upload a new video.